Hi, I'm Grant Spicklemeyer, Executive Director at the International Wolf Center. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight for our first ever virtual Howl at the Moon Gala. Uh, as you know, the last 18 months have been very unusual, and tonight's gala is no exception. Uh, some of what you're about to see was recorded several weeks ago. At that time, we were expecting to be receiving several pups to integrate into our ambassador pack. We were so excited about this that we uh, named our gala Papa Palooza in anticipation. However, what we didn't know at the time was that the uh, litter that was eventually born would only have one pup in it. Uh, this little female is doing quite well and she's up in Ely with our, um, our wolf care staff and will be integrated eventually with Axel and Grayson. Uh, this pup comes to us from the Wildlife Science Center, who has been a longtime friend and collaborator of the International Wolf Center. Uh, they actually provided us pups back in 1989, and in 2008 uh, they gave us Denali, uh, who is currently in our retired pack. Uh, we uh, really appreciate working with the Wildlife Science Center. In fact, we were supposed to work with them last year in 2020 to get pups, but of course COVID got in the way. So I'd like to just take a moment tonight to thank the Wildlife Science Center for being such a good friend over the last 18 challenging months. Now, we have a lot to celebrate tonight as we think about the work that we've been doing that you have helped to support to make such a difference for wolves and people. We hope this gala both honors the legacy of the International Wolf Center and gives you a little glimpse of the exciting things to come. Thanks again for joining us tonight. Now on with the show. Welcome everyone to the first virtual Howl at the Moon Gala for the International Wolf Center. It's Papa Palooza time. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rachel Krug. I'm a naturalist and a singer songwriter. And I am here with an old friend from the Minnesota Zoo where we met. This is the brand new executive director as of 2020 of the International Wolf Center, my friend, Grant Spicklemeyer. Hi, Rachel, thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, emceeing for us. And, uh, and thank you all for, for showing up for our first virtual Howl at the Moon Gala. Um, we know this format is a little unusual. I, I know for many of you, this may be your first time actually seeing me. Um, I, I took over as executive director last January in 2020. Um, and because of, of COVID and the pandemic, uh, I just haven't had the opportunity to meet many of you face to face like I'd hoped. Um, and, uh, but we are so thankful for technology and the ability that uh, it gives us to reach people, uh, continue to educate people, inform people, uh, and teach people about wolves and this gala is just one more iteration of that and we have so many exciting things to share with you today so thanks thanks so much for joining us thank you for being here or at least there yes. in the comfort of your home <laughs> um, you know they they say sometimes that nice guys finish last but let me tell you about Grant every time I worked I had the pleasure of working with you at the zoo you did on-site programming I did off-site mm -hmm. but I enjoyed every moment of it. I love your charisma. I love your passion. I love your dedication mm. to education. And you have taken that uh, through the zoo in Minnesota and then out in Oregon yeah. and, and now come back full circle uh, to uh, Minnesota and it, it's just it's great to have you back. Well and I, I'm really appreciative of that time. I enjoyed working with you too at the Minnesota Zoo. I, I actually found my love for wolves at the Minnesota Zoo, uh, working with the uh, Mexican Wolf Program with uh, Jackie Fallon, who was the keeper there at the time, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know I really found a, a kind of a passion for wolves there. Uh, actually, developed helped develop the video game Wolf Quest, if you remember yes, that. Yes, yes, um, that's got like nine hundred thousand uh, participants. Uh, over two million. Thank you very Whoa. much. Um, I stand corrected. But uh, the great thing about that was that was my opportunity for meeting Dr. Dave Meech. He was our science advisor for that video game when I was at Minnesota Zoo, and uh, it's great to come full circle and connect with Dave again here. Uh, he, of course, is the person who got this whole thing started at the International Wolf Center and uh, is still sitting on our board and very, very active in our day-to-day -day operations. And so 
So he goes from being this guy I watched on National Geographic to somebody I go to board meetings with, which is still a little surreal, I have to tell you that. Alpha but, male of wolf scientists. Yes, yes. Although he wouldn't use the term alpha anymore. No, no, no that, that one, uh, he's breeding males, although I don't think you'd call him the breeding male. So. <laughs> That, we'll leave that one as it is. We'll leave that there. We'll leave that one there. You, you at home, you can look it up later and we can talk about it. Um, but yeah, I'm so thrilled. And I, I know we're going to have him speaking yep, next. Yep. So, along with Nancy Gibson. Along with Nancy Gibson. And Nancy Gibson is another person. It's like uh, when I took this job, uh, I, I talked to Nancy on the phone and I said, Nancy, I have an autographed copy of your book oh. from when I started at the Minnesota Zoo. And uh, I just have always been uh, in awe of her career and her uh, love for wolves and the sharing that she's done with so many tens and tens of thousands of people uh, mm -hmm. about who, what real wolves are like and, and helping people build connections with wolves. So yeah. to have both Dave and Nancy here is just great. It's amazing. And, and I know that you're supposed to do the intro for them, oh, yeah. uh, being the executive director, but I also have personal connections with both of them. So I, I was kind of hoping that I would um, get that opportunity. Uh, David, you know, when I started off as a naturalist, this is like in the early 1990s, I saw him do a presentation on the wolves of Isle Royale. And so I reminded him that of that mm -hmm. today when I saw him. And um, I said, I don't know if you remember me, but in 1991, I was part of the audience and I was probably three rows back. And he goes, yeah, you were a, a little off center. And I went, yeah, that'd be me. Um, and uh, so anyway, he, you know, when you, when you hear somebody with that much passion and, and all of the science and the research that he has done, it, it, it changes a person's life. Just like the next encounter that I had with Nancy Gibson, mm -hmm. an, another one of my heroes. Uh, she and I worked together at the Minnesota Children's Museum. Okay. And, and I got to work with Chance the Arctic Wolf. Mm -hmm. And upon my first meeting uh, with Chance, he stood up on his back legs and he put his front paws right mm -hmm. on my shoulders. And so I looked at his face. I was this far away. And um, it was a moment, yeah. um, a moment that you never forget. Yeah. And then he started licking me in the face. And, hmm. and I did my best ventriloquist. I said, oh, okay, Nancy, what should I do? And she said, don't move. <laughs> Duly yeah. noted. And, and so he proceeded to, I guess, welcome me into his pack. And um, I'll never forget it. So uh, we have these two incredible human beings with us tonight, and um, two of both of our heroes. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, well, I, I was going to say, I actually think it sounds like we both should introduce them. Okay. Simultaneously. I like because it. Because we both have reasons to want to. So let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, David Dave Meech, Meech and Nancy Gibson. Gibson. Crushed it. Well, um, you know, in the late 1960s, um, I was doing quite a bit of uh, wolf research in the Ely area, and um, that was uh, followed up. Um, a number of other people who had worked in that area. So they're doing a wolf project there, and it, uh, the wolf was named an endangered species in 1967. And since we were doing research on it in the Ely area at that time, uh, our project got quite a bit of local publicity. I'd wanted to study wolves around a den my entire career. It turned out that in um, 1986, I had an opportunity to go to Ellesmere Island that's uh, way up in far northern Canada, right across from Greenland, actually, 600 miles from the North Pole. I knew from other publications that the wolves there were unafraid of people. And, and since when I had that opportunity to go there, I thought maybe I could find a wolf den there and a den that I could sit near and, and watch the pups. And long story short, I did find a den there and um, the wolves were very, very tolerant of me. I didn't need to use a long telescope to see them. I could just sit. The pups were so tame, one of them came up and untied my boot lace. Um, so it was just a bonanza for me to, to do this. I connected with Dave. I was doing another television show and Dave was 
the subject of the show and uh, we were flying and we actually happened to see wolves chasing a deer and it was very exciting. And I went from back- From the aircraft. Yeah, from the aircraft, excuse me. Yeah, we did see wolves chasing a deer from an aircraft. Um, and then uh, I was working at the Minnesota Zoo. There was a story about my leaving and Dave called me, not once, not twice, but I think three times and said, I really need some help building the International Wolf Center. And I thought he was crazy. And, uh, but he persisted and finally I said, yes, I will help you build the Wolf Center, but I wanna be out in the field as well. And that was the arrangement we made. And um, I went to Ellesmere three times uh, with Dave. I was out in the field, helped him uh, work on a capture collar, was out in Yellowstone with him, up in uh, Canada with him, helping him uh, capture and uh, give medical treatment to the wolves. So um, it was a great relationship. I learned a lot. We formed a wonderful relationship, but we worked really hard uh, getting the Wolf Center built. We learned at the International Wolf Center that having a captive pack was a huge attraction but we spayed and neutered those wolves so they would not have more pups. But we also knew that having pups not only was another uh, attraction, but a, a tremendous education opportunity. So we started getting pups every four years and the pups were always captive born and we would get them between 10 and 12 days of age when their eyes were still closed and they would smell us, they could hear us, but they couldn't see us. So when their eyes opened, the first thing they saw were humans. And we became the, the ones, we had a variety of people raising them, and we became the ones that fed them and uh, worked with them. And let me make it very clear, this is not domesticating wolves. This is showing them tolerance for survival in a wolf pack. People are going to become more interested in, in wolves in other places because they're showing up there. So for example, uh, you know, there's wolves in California now. And um, uh, folks there just 10 years ago would not have ever thought there were gonna be wolves in California. And um, this represents an opportunity for the Wolf Center as well, because uh, wherever wolves show up, you know, there's this misinformation about them. Misinformation that's distributed by the extremes on both sides. I mean, some people love wolves so much that they, tend sometimes to propagandize about them and the, those who hate them, you know, they think awful things about them that are untrue, but they promulgate those. And so the Wolf Center stands kind of, uh, well, stands in a, the scientific position here where we can say what we know about wolves that's actually valid and true and accurate. Membership became a very important part of the International Wolf Center because we could connect with people who were very interested with wolves. We could give them up-to-date information about wolves. We could discuss controversial issues with, with, uh, about wolves with the public. So, and also we're the International Wolf Center. So we were able to get members from all, all states, Washington, D.C., and a wide variety of countries. And that was probably all enhanced by our International Wolf Symposiums, where we had international people come in and speak, present to the public about the issues in those states, and that has really kept the, the membership going. So a very integral part of our education. So then at a certain age, uh, we would bring the wolf pups be uh, with the fence uh, between them and the adults and let them smell them and most wolves are very excited about pups. It's just in their, in their natural behavior. It's a prolactin that they produce for the males and females that are very attracted to pups. They are natural parents. So uh, then they would slowly be reintroduced and then the public would see not only cute, cuddly, tumbling puppies, but they would also see the interaction between the adults and the pups. And that is for survival of pups, not in, in the wild, they need to have a very uh, tight uh, relationship with the adults. That's called survival. I'm so excited to welcome a very old friend of mine, Cindy Carvelli Yu. She is the Development Committee Chair and the Gala Chair. She served on the Center's Board of Directors for over eight years 
and she brings a wealth of experience from serving on boards both in Minneapolis and St. Paul and now the International Wolf Center. You are going to love her. She is full of passion and just so much fun to be around and we're so excited to have her with us today. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You know, giving to the International Wolf Center truly makes a difference. Not only do we educate kiddos in the classroom, we disperse that information to colleges and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, to states all across the United States and countries all over the world. Every time you make a donation, it truly makes a difference. Not only do we get to continue our mission and continue that education outreach, we get to make sure those pups are taken care of and integrated into the pack. We get to make sure that our doors in Ely stay open so that we can welcome those thousands of guests into our interpretive center every year so they too can learn about wolves and wolf behavior. Thank you again so much for joining us tonight and please consider making a donation because without you, we couldn't make a difference and educate people about wolves. So we made it very easy to donate tonight. All you have to do is text WOLF to 56651. So open up your text message instead of the phone number, enter 56651, and in the body of the text, type in the word WOLF and hit send. That will return a link to you where you can open up that link and make a donation. Or you can go directly to our homepage at WOLF.org and donate that way as well please consider donating. We need your help. Thanks, Cindy. So now let's hear again from Grant about his connection to the Wolf Center. I think my first year at the uh, International Wolf Center was 120% different than I thought it would be. Um, uh, we immediately had to pivot. We had to shut down. We were shut down for, at the Visitor Center for 22 weeks of the year. Um, we were planning on bringing in pups last year and we had to uh, postpone that. We had to cancel hundreds of in-person uh, programs. Um, so there was all sorts of loss. We said, okay, we can't meet kids in school. Well, let's uh, take this WolfLink program we had, which was a video conferencing uh, vi virtual classroom basically, and let's start offering it for free to schools all over the country. And we had thousands and thousands of kids sign up. And then we had our biologist webinars, um, which we'd, we'd done periodically. And uh, we started talking to some of these scientists who are out you know, actively studying wolves. And uh, they just said, yeah, we'd love to contribute. And we were able to have some amazing conversations with some amazing biologists like Doug Smith. And well, Dave uh, came and talked uh, to, to our folks a couple of times, actually. Our donor community has been incredible and we lost a ton of money, uh, let's, no, no bones about it, uh, with the visitor center being closed for 22 weeks. And our donors stepped up and they supported us and they supported the wolves. Uh, you know, I know we have some folks out there who love, love, love our ambassador wolves and follow them on the webcams on explore.org and, and are constantly emailing us when something happens at two in the morning with Grayson. Um, and they not only sent us those emails, but they sent us checks. And uh, that was uh, so heartening to our staff. Um, It's hard to say how much that means to our staff to know that the community cares about us. I am so excited about the coming year for our uh, center, for the International Wolf Center. You know, the pups, of course, are exciting, and that's going to liven up the pack. It's going to liven up our visitors, and uh, we're going to get to learn so much from those pups. I'm looking forward to in-person programming. You know, as much as I love, love, love the Wolf Link and webinar programs, and I hope we continue to meet thousands of people online. Uh, I, you know, I started as an in-person educator. I love being in front of a group of people talking about animals I'm passionate about. I know all of our educators do as well up at the Visitor Center. So we're really excited to uh, do more in-person programming this coming year. Over the next year or two, we are going to be coming up with a variety of different uh, partnerships and opportunities to 
invest in the next generation of wolf scientists. And probably the most exciting thing that we've come up with is we are going to be announcing uh, the first ever Dr. Dave Meech Fellowship Program uh, in the coming months. And this will be a fellowship for undergraduate biology students who are needing that little extra nudge to give them the opportunity to get out in the field and, and get field experience studying wolves or studying other canids. We're going to be uh, formally announcing that this fall, um, but I give a little tease to the, the gala folks um, and let them know about it as well. And that's just one of the things that we're talking about. You know, I think it's, it's uh, next year's our symposium year of 2022, so we've got hundreds of scientists coming in for that and uh, we're, we're already having conversations about how we can build off of that and, and kind of take, take our, our knowledge of wolves and our commitment to wolf science to the next level after that. All right, now it's time to head up to beautiful Ely where Lori Schmidt, the lead wolf curator for the International Wolf Center, has a couple of surprises for us. It wouldn't be called Pupapalooza without seeing some pups. Thanks for joining us at the Howl of the Moon Gala 2021. We appreciate your support being here. I'm live in Ely, Minnesota right now and wherever you're watching, we're hoping that you have a great opportunity to get to know our center a little bit better. Many of you are probably been supporters for years and years and years. And of myself as the curator here, I've been associated with the Wolf Center since 1989. And I thought I would take a little time to kind of remind ourselves of where we've been and the journey that we've taken to get here to the 2021 uh, Papapalooza and having that opportunity to maybe introduce you to our newest member of the Ambassador Wolves. But we started here in 1989 as a seasonal exhibit, meaning we were here from Memorial Day to Labor Day and our first set of wolves were born in uh, uh, April 24th, 1989, uh, Jedediah, Basha, Balazar, and Raisa, and they were the start of this organization. That first group of wolves really showed that there was interest and support in wolf education here in northern Minnesota. And so that prompted, as you heard from Dave and Nancy, uh, the history of the Wolf Center to get the Wolves and Humans exhibit to be the permanent part of the International Wolf Center display. And in 1993, with that permanent exhibit, came our first set of permanent residents, Ambassador Wolves. And so in 1993, that was Mackenzie, Lucas, Lakota, and Kiana that came to the exhibit. And then we discovered that, you know, after a few years, wolves age. And so we started this philosophy of adopting pups from other facilities. And so in the year 2000, we adopted Shadow and Malik. And Shadow and Malik were Arctic subspecies. So we also at that time decided this is a good opportunity for us to introduce the world to the different subspecies of gray wolf that do occur in North America. And so in the, the uh, adoption of the Arctic wolf, uh, we then looked at maybe rotating species or subspecies of the gray wolf. And so in 2004, we brought in a Great Plains subspecies of Grizzer, Nisa, and Maya uh, to the exhibit. And we all know that Grizzer is still with us as a 17-year-old member of our retired facility. And then in 2008, we decided to bring in the Northwestern subspecies. And so that was Denali and Aiden. And Denali is still a member of our retirement village today. And then in 2012, we brought in Luna and Bolts, both Great Plains subspecies. And then 2016, Axel and Grayson joined us as Arctic subspecies. So that kind of brings you the history. And Axel and Grayson are still with us in the exhibit pack right now. And that brings us to the 2021 pups, which uh, we just got word that they had a little bit of a later whelping uh, pattern, meaning that the pups were born on May 23rd of this year of 2021. And that pattern of later birth related to the fact that their parents were both wild caught wolves from Northern British Columbia. So they had a little bit of a different time schedule uh, to them. Uh, one pup was whelped 
uh, that means born um, to that litter. And uh, we did decide to go ahead and adopt her. She is a female. And so we felt it was very important to bring a female into this social group of Axel and Grayson, uh, two five-year-old male pups. And so this uh, uh, event tonight is uh, hoping to give you an opportunity to get an early glimpse of a very, very young pup still in that neonate transitional stage, uh, very fragile, uh, being bottle fed uh, by our wolf care staff. And uh, that process of bottle feeding will continue uh, hopefully till she's about maybe uh, six weeks old. We hope to keep her uh, bottle feeding for that strong social bond that we have with our wolves that allows us to care for them from the neonate stage all the way to those end of life decisions that we make in retirement. So we have spent years putting together behavioral dictionaries that helps our staff watch behavior, interpret behavior and code behavior and we wanted to share the same experience with the public. So Wolf Care staff has been working over the last four years with uh, putting together a pup ethogram and uh, helping the next generation be wolf researchers. And this pup ethogram was funded by Ann Byers. Uh, it is a uh, retail product that will be available in the store. All proceeds are gonna go to the Wolf Care donation line. Uh, so helping support Wolf Care, but also helping people learn about wolf behavior and be able to understand what a pup is doing in the upcoming months as it matures from a neonate to a transition to the socialization stage, to the juvenile stage, and all the way to maturity at 18 to 24 months. So a lot of you wondering, might be wondering how our donations used when you donate to the Wolf Center, um, how, do, how does that kind of make itself to the Ambassador Wolves. When you support the International Wolf Center, you're supporting the organization that supports our staff. And so having adequate wolf care staff to be able to do the job, to make sure that we have a curator, to make sure that we have wolf specialists, to make sure that we have an assistant curator, to make sure that we have you know, people available to do wolf care 24 seven, to make sure that we have electricity to run uh, the 10 surveillance cameras that are running 24 seven, you know, to make sure that we have a warm environment. We have a wolf care center that is heated uh, in the winter time. That's where Grizzer spent a fair amount of, of the winter uh, coming in and out of the building, especially during the polar vortex when we had, you know, wind chills of 50 below. And we have a wolf who's approaching 17 years of age. We need to bring him into the building to warm him up, to have his breakfast. Wolves are fed seven days a week in retirement. Um, meds are done on a daily basis. So having those food resources, again, just the facility, logistics to be able to support us. Um, everything, every donation that is made is, is helping us manage day-to-day -day operations. In addition to the educational mission, uh, the educators who are here communicating with the public, making sure our message is understood, answering questions, and again, whether that be a wolf link program across the world or whether that be you know, someone in Ely who's bringing their family up for a summer, summer visit, uh, we are here to help serve uh, any way possible to answer questions and educate about, about wolves. So when I hear about the success of, of events like the gala or the wolf care auction or the Give to the Wolves Day that we have in November, it, it, it helps tremendously with with day-to-day -day operations. It helps tremendously with care of the wolves, but also it helps nourish our soul that there are people who care about the place of large carnivores in the natural world. And I think uh, I started in working with wolves in 1986, and I see the misunderstanding about wolves, and I still see the need for wolf education. And when I see the support that we get from members, and again, whether it be birthday, you know, a birthday a fundraiser, or whether it be a gala, organized gala like tonight, um, it just it just is so encouraging to me that there is hope uh, for understanding and for support for large predators on the landscape. So thank you for joining us at the Howl of the Moon Gala, and we uh, appreciate your support, uh, not only for pups, but we appreciate support all through the Ambassador Wolves lives, including our boy Grizzer, who is 17 years of age. He is the oldest wolf we have managed here and uh, at the International Wolf Center, and, and we couldn't do it without support of our members 
uh, uh, like you who are here tonight. And thank you from the bottom of our heart from every Ambassador Wolf that has gone but not forgotten and every Ambassador Wolf that is yet to come. Uh, we appreciate your support. Okay, so Cindy, I've got my phone here because I want to text right away and make my donation. Wonderful. What do I do? So you open up your text message icon. Got it. And in the phone number field, you enter 56651. 56651. And in the text message field, enter the word wolf. wolf. That's mm -hmm. gonna return a response with a link that you can click on and open up and it takes you right to our donate page. Super easy. No amount is too small or too large. Without a doubt. We will appreciate any donation that you can give. Or you can go to wolf.org to our donate page and donate that way as well. Either way, please consider giving so we can continue our mission to educate the world about wolves. Is there something on, on your back? I don't know. Is, is there something? Oh, oh look at that. Oh. It's a, <laughs> in case you needed a little extra reminder. Here we go. Absolutely. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes is from Baba Diom, environmentalist and poet. And he said, in the end, we will conserve only what we love. And we will love only what we understand. And we will understand only what we are taught. We have learned so much tonight about the wolf. And we really hope that We've touched your heart, that your heart is open and your pocketbook will be open and you will contribute as generously as you can to this wonderful organization. It's been a privilege to be a part of it and we want to thank all of you for joining us at home for this wonderful event. We're going to wrap things up uh, just as the wolves might when they are happy. Absolutely, and it's a call out to the pack, right? Yes. So, oh. oh.